Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a cinch waist dress. Using a washable marker, I mark up my pattern, and I'm just sort of making a meandering sort of S shape. And then I'm going to pleat along this line, and I'm going to do it very sloppy and really quick. I want it to have a very, well, I always say organic, but I do. I want it to just have an organic, scrunchy, sloppy sort of pleat to it. And then I'm going to secure it by using my second favorite rubber bands. And then as it becomes smaller, I'm going to go down into my tiny baby hair rubber bands. And again, for this one, the more organic and more sloppy, the better. So as you can see, I've moved down into my smaller baby hair rubber bands. I want the project to be held together nice and tight, but it doesn't need to be like super cinched up and tight. This type of making tie-dye reminds me of the tie-dye that I grew up looking at. So my uncle um, in the 60s tried his hand at making tie-dye and it was nothing like it is today. It was very, um, well, just, it wasn't so artistic like it is now. Some of the guys creating tie-dye and gals, it's they're like masterpieces. Uh, complete tie-dye artists. I'm a tie-dyer. I'm an ice dyer. I'm also a tie-dye artist. But, you know, those uh, geometric patterns and all that, you know, specifically like Stephen Jay and Justin and Carl and Josh and... Kai and all the names that I'm forgetting who make those extremely intricate patterns. I mean, that stuff is incredible. I enjoy looking at stuff like that, but I do not enjoy making it. And that's why I always say have fun tie dyeing because I really mean it. You have to find what you enjoy doing and do that because if you try to force it, at least with me, when I try to force a project, it never turns out the way that I want it to. Um, I'm an ice dyer. I like the color splits. I like adding dye to fabric. I just like to dye fabric. Uh, I don't have the patience for all that heavy duty, um, like the intricate geometric patterns, drawing on the lines and pleating and all that. That is not where the fun is for me. The fun for me is adding the dye and taking a blank canvas and just seeing it full of rainbow colors. So this is what this reminds me of. Like I said, it's the kind of like an old school, not a lot of skill involved, just bright colors, you know, feel happy. So this is a really large piece. So to save on space, I'm just going to sort of roll it up like a spiral. It's not actually a spiral, more like a cinnamon roll. And I'm just gonna secure it by using a rubber band. And then I'm going to create my setup. So I'm going to rack dye this one. So I'm going to place it on a dollar store foil baking pan, but they leak. So you need to make sure that you put it down inside of a tote to catch all the melting ice. Then I place it on a rack and I need to create some type of an ice barrier. 
and these are called silicone cake molds and I do have links for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye so make sure that you check that out For this project, I'm doing the dye over ice method. So you'll see it abbreviated in the Facebook groups, DOI. And I'm only applying a thin layer. I want the dye to only saturate about halfway down through the fabric. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and set it aside so the ice can melt. And after the ice melted, I came back and I checked it. And now it's time to flip it over and basically repeat the process. Now, the reason why I started with the purples first is because now I'm going to be adding colors that have turquoise in it. And it has been my experience with turquoise. Turquoise really travels and it's a heavy saturator. So I wanted to make sure that this dress is two-toned. So I felt like if I would have started with the turquoise, it would have potentially taken over the entire project. And then when I added my purple, it would have been too much mixing. Now, I don't know if it made a difference starting with the purple or the turquoise, uh, but that's just why I did what I did. Again, I gave it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then I covered it. And it's recommended that you let your project batch for at least 24 hours at 70 degrees or higher. And I can tell you this project batched for the full 48 hours. So far, so good. I've got the turquoise on one side and the purple on the other, just like I hoped it would. So now it's time for the rinse out and you want to start by using cold water that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. So cold water removes all that soda ash so it doesn't go into your washing machine and the hot water removes the unbonded dye so it goes down your drain or in your grass or wherever you do your rinsing instead of into the washing machine. From here, I take the project to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma Trading Company. And again, with everything else, it's listed down below. And I highly recommend that you check out the description box because there's a lot of information down there. Then I'll put the project in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, 
Well, here it is, guys. I think this dress turned out fantastic. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted to have a two-tone dress. I didn't want a lot of the purples to mix with the greens, and I have definitely achieved that. There is no muddy mess on this anywhere. So if I was asked today, like what are my colors to go to other than the primaries, I would say definitely choose these colors. They are beautiful and I use them a lot. For those of you that have been following along, you know that these are like my go-to colors. I love this dress. Bella is unfortunately having to wear it in the full blown sun. It's going to be 100 degrees today, just something we're not used to here in Oregon but it's going to make my garden grow huge, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Now here are the extreme close-ups, and just look at how pretty those colors are together. I absolutely love them, and I love this dress. It is so adorable, and I think I have like 30 of them, so I'm going to be making a lot of these dresses. And the fun thing about this particular dye method, you can put wild colors together and they don't get muddy, so I highly recommend it. Overall, I'm very pleased with the outcome. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.